Now about a year ago before the season started I made a video about my guy Shea Gilgis Alexander. I titled it that Shea is going to be a future star in the NBA and just a couple of days ago news broke that Shea Gilgis received the max extension and before I go any further I would like to give props to Shea Gilgis Alexander for officially being a winner in life. I mean he was a winner anyway by making the NBA, he was already a millionaire but that extension was really just icing on the cake so props to Shea and the Oklahoma City Thunder on getting that deal done. But speaking of the Oklahoma City Thunder similar to the Pistons they are a small market team and they don't really get a lot of love on YouTube so if you love this video make sure you drop a like to show me some support on this channel if you enjoy me as a content creator. I really appreciate the support that you guys showed on the Pistons video that I dropped a couple of days ago so if you guys can replicate that success I would definitely appreciate it. But without further ado let's talk about my guy Shea Gilgis Alexander and how he went from a role player to a franchise player for the Oklahoma City Thunder. To fully understand the transformation of Shea from a role player to a franchise guy you obviously obviously have to go all the way back to the beginning when he was drafted by the Los Angeles Clippers. Because coming into the league at the 11th overall pick, there were many questions about Shea Gilgis Alexander's game, primarily his outside scoring. As in college at Kentucky, shout out to my Wildcats by the way, people looked at his inability to shoot and knock down jumpers from the outside and said it would be a major hindrance as obviously spacing is such a prevalent thing in the NBA now and taking a 6'6 point guard whose outside game was the weakness in his game was definitely a risk especially at the 11th overall pick. But right away Shea Gill just proved that he could still be an effective player even without his jump shot as in his rookie season his numbers didn't leap off the page in any major way but in the playoffs he stepped up for the Clippers as they ended up taking the Warriors to six games and even in the series he actually shot 50% from behind the arc albeit on three attempts but for him to come in right away in his rookie year and contribute to winning basketball on a team that not only made the playoffs but was able to take the Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant to six games, that was a huge sign that Shea could be an impactful player as soon as his rookie season. And mind you, he wasn't even the first or second or even third option on most nights. But the next following year, Shea was actually moved obviously to the Oklahoma City Thunder as a part of the Paul George trade. And I actually think it benefited both sides. Obviously the Clippers got Paul George in the process but the Oklahoma City Thunder got a young guard that showed promise of being a star player as soon as his rookie season. Yes the numbers are not going to back that up but the fact that he was just contributing on a team that was a playoff team mind you that should show you all you need to know. And in his sophomore season with the Oklahoma City Thunder, he upped all of his averages as a 19 point per game score, along with grabbing six rebounds, shooting 47% from the field, 35% from behind the arc, and 81% at the free throw line. Now granted, his three point shot definitely was still a little bit shaky. He was shooting below league average just a little bit on only around three to four attempts. So there definitely was still room for improvement, but you could see with more opportunities, more shots, he was still a contributor and the Thunder made the playoffs that year and Shea was a big reason why as you could argue he was their second best player. And due to their personnel of having Chris Paul, Dennis Schroeder on the court at times and Dennis Schroeder had a really solid season off the bench, they ran some three guard lineups and Shea even played some small forward and Shea did an exceptional job. Obviously he wasn't the greatest wing defender in the world but that's not even his position and I believe he more than held his own and considering that he has a wingspan of almost seven feet long that was definitely to his advantage on the defensive side of the ball and outside of the numbers if you just watched Shea play in his sophomore season you could definitely see how much better he was from his rookie year as his mid-range game improved with more opportunities he definitely showed off that he could finish at the basket as well with the finger roll his handles are really smooth and it helped the shot creation ability his wingspan gave him an advantage on the boards as he was one of the better rebounders at his position and even when it comes to his three-point shot it was definitely a little streaky here and there but considering that he was taking more of them and there was more attention on him as he was more of a scoring threat in his sophomore season versus his rookie season I would say shooting 34 to 35 percent on just about four attempts is not that bad. So already in Shea's career in year two he has proven that he can contribute to playoff teams and play winning basketball and not only is he on playoff teams but he's on playoff teams that are overachieving. The first team in LA being a team that took the Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant to six games which is two more games than people expected coming into that series and also with the Oklahoma City Thunder being arguably the second best player on that team and them not only being the fifth seed that was on pace for over 50 wins before the season was canceled but them also being one three-point shot that was blocked by James Harden away 
from getting to the second round of the NBA playoffs. So Shea has already proven a lot just by year two in his career, but yet unfortunately he still had his doubters going into year three. As many people thought that he benefited from having shot creators around him in LA, guys like Gallinari and Lou Williams, as well as even help on the defensive end as he had Patrick Beverly on the perimeter with him. And even when he got to OKC, despite him having a really solid sophomore season, the excuse was that he had a guy like Chris Paul, Dennis Schroeder, Gallinari, and just a plethora of offensive options to the point that defenses didn't really focus in on him. And even on the defensive side of the ball, he had Lou Dort and Steven Adams protecting the rim. And I'm not even saying that those points aren't valid. There's definitely some truth to that, especially for him going into his third year of a team that is obviously tanking as they traded all of those players away. But let me remind you that I might be a little bit biased, but I'm just going to say this, that if you watch Shea in Kentucky, if you watch Shea in his rookie year with the Clippers and if you watch Shea in his sophomore season with the Oklahoma City Thunder you can see this thing in Shea's game that we all call as human beings improvement and Shea improved year after year after year in his rookie year he was obviously not comfortable as a shot creator but he still pitched in in ways that he could by knocking down the shots that were given to him pitching in on the defensive end and just doing whatever was necessary to contribute to wins and in his sophomore season he even upped that by doing those exact same things but even being able to contribute as a shot creator and a number two option so going into his third season I really had no doubt in my mind that Shea was going to rise to the occasion and even up his averages and cement himself as a legitimate young star in the NBA. As this past season, with finally the keys to the reins of the offense, Shea Gill just averaged 24 points along with 6 assists and 5 rebounds, shooting 51% from the field, 42% from behind the arc, while shooting nearly 5 threes a game and 81% at the free throw line. That translates to a true shooting percentage of 62%. Shea was literally doing it all for the Oklahoma City Thunder, and even in the games that he played before suffering an injury at the end of the season, the Thunder were 16 and 19, with a roster that they made purposely to tank. If that doesn't show you that Shea can be an impactful player on an NBA team, I honestly don't know what will. I mean, I even remember people were doubting if Shea can be a legitimate point guard in the NBA because he's never been that much of a facilitator and his playmaking inabilities might hold him back. But I don't even understand why people don't use their common sense when it comes to things like this. Shea has never been put in the role to be the primary initiator of offense. I mean, even last year, he wasn't even the secondary initiator of offense. They had Dennis Schroeder off the bench and in his rookie season, he was a rookie surrounded by other better options to play make the ball. But even despite Shea Gilgis doing that in his third season and having that much of an impact on a team that was built purposely to tank, there were still idiots out there that were trying to push this narrative that the Thunder were trying to trade Shea Gilgis in the sixth pick also they can move up and take Cade Cunningham? And then combine that with this narrative that Shea is not a quote unquote winning player and that all his stats proved is that he can put up numbers on a bad team even though the guy had an insane 62% true shooting percentage? I mean, come on, stop being lazy and stop making things more complicated than they need to be. Because as soon as free agency opened up, the Thunder put all of that bullshit to bed by making Shea officially their franchise guy with the max extension. So all the haters and all the doubters, please eat your L and keep it moving because Shea Gilgis Alexander doesn't take that, he only takes W's. And I have enjoyed what I have seen from Shea and I hope we continue to see his growth in the NBA. I believe Shea is going to be an all-star, all-NBA caliber player. I mean, him doing what he did last season, albeit it was only 35 games, but combine that with the growth that he has shown from college to his rookie year, rookie year to his sophomore year, and from his sophomore year till now, I gotta say, the growth has been beautiful to watch and I am glad to see even more growth in his future but that is just my opinion you guys if you agree let me know down below in the comment section and also drop a like but if you disagree let me know also down below in the comment section your thoughts on Shea Gilgis Alexander and how he went from a role player to the Oklahoma City Thunders franchise guy but make sure you guys also hit that subscribe button press the bell for post notifications and check out my second channel if I must the link is down below in the description box this is your boy Young Mustard signing out y'all have a blessed day peace